Charles Finney was one of the great leaders and preachers of the Second Great Awakening. He lived from 1792 to 1875. He was born to a non-Christian family and, and uh, never went to um, college, which was surprising because he ended up becoming a college professor. But when he was 29, uh, he was studying law to become a lawyer and kept being referred back to the Bible um, for um, references to the original sources. And it drew him to pick up a Bible for the first time and read it. Um, and while he was doing that, he was also the choir director for a church, which was kind of unusual uh, in my mind, but apparently it was uh, quite common during that period because it was uh, a lot more common to be um, a Christian or faith-based in some sort of way. And um, uh, he, over the course of two or three years, was talking with the pastor, uh, debating other parishioners about uh, the val validity of Christianity, um, and came to a point where he had had enough and wanted to either have an encounter with God of his own or be done with it. And so he told God if he did encounter him, he would preach um, for the rest of his life and uh, locked himself in a room and had um, an encounter with God that we would call being baptized in the Spirit, where he spoke in tongues, um, felt the overwhelming presence of God, and was miraculously converted. He came out uh, immediately and started preaching to um, the church that he was leading the, the, the choir at, and led a bunch of other non-Christians who were attending there to faith, and became... Uh, a preacher from that day forth, he uh, immediately set off and uh, started walking town to town, um, preaching the gospel and uh, bringing people to Jesus. So he, as I said, started just walking before he even had a horse, which is what he eventually started using, uh, and uh, a larger team of people going around preaching, uh, doing tent revivals, uh, but he started in the New York area and then the broader New England area, uh, and he did that for 10 years straight um, and brought renewal of the Christian faith and revival to places that even the law couldn't keep in order, and other preachers warned him not to visit. He'd go to places, and um, it was common for the whole area to be converted. Bars would shut down because people would give out, al give up alcohol. Um, people would commonly have what we would label charismatic experiences of being slain in the spirit by the power of God, uh, deeply convicted by their sins, and even speaking in tongues. And this is all in the 1820s, uh, you know, 80, nearly 100 years before the Azusa Street Revival and other um, similar revivals. Um, but his ministry went on for uh, for 10 years in, in, a, in a touring manner, and he ended up bringing an estimated nearly 500,000 people to Christ. Um, just from his preaching. Um, and in addition to the spiritual renewal and reform that uh, was brought about by his preaching, uh, Finney was controversial for, t for bringing about two social reforms that he thought were also uh, biblically and spiritually based. Um, and the first was that he encouraged the participation of women in his services by having them pray uh, for people going through the conversion experience. 
sharing their testimonies or even sometimes teachings in front of the whole gatherings and praying for over meetings and as he saw women's prayer to be a key to the success of revivals so he had a prayer team that was uh, strongly made up of women and he saw that as one of the great reasons why they had so much success um, additionally he was also one of the great uh, abolitionist preachers and he saw it which i think is brilliant and beautiful as a cultural sin um, that was pervasive at his time and one that we not only need to be rid ourselves of individually but also corporately and so he preached the abolition of slavery um, during his his 10 years on the road as well as throughout the rest of his life as a scholar and that moves us into Oberlin Collegiate Institute or Oberlin College as it's called today um, in 1835 um, through 1850 Finley became one of the founding professors uh, of theology and he taught he taught theology there and then uh, at, at, from 1850 to 66 he became the college's second president um, while there I love this. He he pre he continued to preach the abolition of slavery, uh, and Oberlin was the first college in America to to not only admit African Americans, but also women from the college's founding days, which is awesome. And it was a Presbyterian university. Uh, the university even became a part of the Underground Railroad. Uh, as many of its students and faculty would help former slaves free the South. They were in Ohio, close to um, other states that were slave states, and so um, they were in a, in a position to help them, um, and they took full advantage of that. So, kind of some final notes to summarize. Um, Charles Finney became one of the major leaders of the Second Great Awakening, if you Google it, uh, he's one of the major names that pops up. He influenced so many people because of his preaching, but also his writings. Um, it's estimated that over half a million people gave their lives to the Lord because of Finney's preaching. Uh, also, countless books and theological articles of his were published from early on in his revivalist days until he died which shaped the theological landscape of the 19th century in America. Um, he was in conversation with other major theologians of his day, uh, Dodd at um, Princeton Theological Seminary, on another Presbyterian uh, theologian who was more of the old school. He would, uh, Finney argued against him and would call himself of the new school. Um, so he was, though a, a Presbyterian minister, he, uh, Finney argued against many traditional Presbyterian dogmas and was extremely anti-Calvinist, particularly in regard to predestination and for the freedom of the will in the salvation process. He believed that people, people's will uh, actually does play a role in um, their conversion experience, uh, unlike a Calvinist perspective that says it's the will is bound. Calvin and Luther would both say that, and he argued strongly against it. Um, he was a passionate preacher and a very influential man in, uh, in the spiritual landscape of the 19th century, and I hope that gives you a little more information about Charles Finney.